Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mike Chu, a physical therapist, certified dementia practitioner, and your alternative career coach. Welcome to our career healthcare podcasting show where we talk about different ways to find your alternative career and achieve both work and financial freedom. So visit our website, drmikechua.com or alternativehealthcarecareers.com for more information. Again, thank you for watching and listening. Welcome to our show. Be awesome, be great, be excellent, ACG. Have a great day and enjoy the show. Bye-bye. All right. I love it. All right. I think we are live in our Facebook page. Hello, 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 Alzheimer's Alternative Careers for Rehab Professional. This is Dr. Mike Chua again, physical therapist, certified dementia practitioner, and your alternative career coach. If you are watching live, please comment live. If you're watching on the replay, please comment replay because we just want to know if you are here or not, if this video is actually really helping you or whatever we're doing here is is helping you or not. So today we have a very special guest. We have Mike Chua. No, we have <laughs> Shapiro, our awesome administrator. Yes. And of course, Bert Devera, the awesome, the dashing, the debonair, Engelbert Devera. <laughs> He's actually one of my coaches, really helping me a lot. He's been mentoring me. Uh, let me Let me stop my share here. There you go. He's been helping me, you know, just really being how to be awesome, how to start your own business. And uh, just to, so everybody knows, I have my small home health uh, contracting agency. And without him, I won't be able to do what I'm doing, you know. But you need to be the, you need to find a, peep, a people. You need to find people that's actually going to help you and bring out the best in you. And uh, I've connected with him. And uh, obviously, he's uh, a fellow, a, a good Christian man, a physical therapist. He has his own uh, contracting home health agency. And now he's switching and, and pivoting because of what's going on right now to a much better, uh, whatever you call that. Now he's doing real estate. And uh, you want to follow people who is actually doing what they're doing, just like me. You know, why would you? Go to my course if I'm not treating dementia patients. Not that actually doing uh, uh, my dementia thing. And I want to follow him because he was doing his home health contracting. And that's what I wanted to do. And same thing with flipping houses or whatever you call that, buying real estate. Uh, so right now, that's what he's going to do. Uh, help us tonight. Uh, how he did it. You know, I know it's a lot of investment. I know he has lots of money. That's why I'm trying. To, <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, maybe we could uh, ask money from him, right? Like a special down payment program or whatever. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> about that. You know, I mean, come on now, Bert. 20000 What is 20000 <laughs> to you, man? So, again, without further ado, uh, we've got Bert Devera. Please tell us where you're at right now. What do you do? And uh, please help us. Please help us achieve financial <laughs> freedom here and please help me pay my student loans and credit card bill, please. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Emma. You guys have been so gracious for having me. Uh, but before I, I say anything, maybe Emma wants to uh, start us off with, with something. Emma, go ahead. If you want to say something or... Oh, no, you guys are doing great. I'll lead the way, Bert. I, I, well, I mean, I don't know very much about real estate, so I'm interested in this topic. I think okay. this topic is, is, is going to be pretty neat. And I think a lot of you out there, you know, as you start to gain more financial freedom, you know, this COVID-19 brought to light the importance of having multiple revenue streams. And that's why we have really been trying to do a lot of courses for alternative healthcare careers, really trying to teach about how to shift to telehealth, how to shift to online, virtual wellness, uh, you know, the whole gambit, side hustles. And really, I think this is just another one of those topics where depending upon your, you know, what you want to do and your desire and what you like to do, you know, having multiple income streams are so valuable and so important. And this is just another avenue for you to learn another income stream. 
That's right. And thanks, Emma, for, for uh, sharing that. Guys, um, for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Bert. I'm one of the moderators here at ACG. And uh, tonight, I'm going to share with you how I did my first flip. So um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive in. Well, first off, why did I do this flip? I'm sure a lot of you guys are dabbling about real estate, right? You, you've probably been thinking, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I wonder how is it to flip a house? Oh, it's stressful. Oh, it takes a lot of money. So I'm in that boat before I dove into this first flip that I did. And so finally, after going through research, after going through seminars, live seminars, webinars, and reading, I'm the type of guy that I have to research everything before I do something. And then it, when it finally made sense, I went ahead and dove in. You know what? What the heck? The best way to learn is just do it, right? So you just got to do it, okay? So um, it's, like, it's like marriage. You, you, you'll never know when the perfect timing is and all that. There's no such thing. You just, you just know and do it. Right, Emma? <laughs> right. Well, exactly. Mine got, mine got postponed, but yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, um, oh, so here we go. I got a shotgun wedding, you know, so that's <laughs> <Just> kidding. <laughs> my wife's probably. <laughs> uh, all right. So I, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, guys. Uh, oops. I need you guys to enable me um, sharing my screen. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Share my screen. All right, here we go. So we're going to dive in and have little slides in here. Okay, so this is my first flip. Can you see it, guys? Yes. Okay. So well, the question is, what, why, why flip? I mean, is, what, is there any, you're like flipping it? Basically, yeah, those people, you, I mean, I, you know, yeah, I, I flip, know. that's a good question. Like, yeah, what does flip mean? Yeah, in flip terms? in real estate terms means it's like, it's like, say, if this is a coin, right? You flip <laughs> it and you show the other side, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, you're flipping this house from being old and ugly to remodeling it and turning it into a new house. Wow. So that's how it came up with um, the term flip, as far as I know. Uh -huh. right. Well, the reason I, I, I hear it, I've been hearing it because I've seen those shows in HGTV, you know, yeah, Flip every, or Flop. Catching, Is that, was that your inspiration? <laughs> yep. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of shows out there that um, have inspired others and have inspired me as well. So, Is, Who's your inspiration, the guy or the girl? <laughs> um, those, those couple from uh, Waco, right? Yeah, so, uh, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, one yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, Chip yeah, and both Joanne. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of them. I mean, it, it's a team effort, and They're and just good. just like with this one, it's it's a team effort. It's me and my wife. I wouldn't have done this without my wife's uh, blessing. So, she is she is as invested as I am. So, because without without you two agreeing to do something, then it can't come into fruition. You know, well, it may, but it's going to be hard if if you're not on the same page. You know what? Right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Even so, even in business, if you're if your 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 partner is not uh, supporting you, uh, it's going to be hard uh, to move on to your next level. So thank you for pointing that out. It needs to be. It's, of course, with this one here, you're investing a lot of money. Well, for you, probably it's not a lot, but for me, come on, Mike. A lot. <laughs> Right, Emma. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sure you'll probably actually get into that, Bert, because I, I I love watching HGTV. If people don't know this about me, I love those shows. <laughs> um, but but there's a lot of financing going involved. So I mean, Bert yes. will, can probably explain that that it's maybe not as much money as we think. I only know like what I know from TV, but but I feel like depending upon finances, if you can flip it and sell it quickly enough, you may not have to pay that much i don't know Bert, bert's the expert we'll we'll tackle that um i'm definitely not an expert guys just just a disclaimer bert's this, done it at least yeah. yeah this is my first flip at least i can share with you my first experience and you know the real experience of a flipper first time flipper the losses the the stress and the wins okay so i'm gonna tell you the real truth and nothing but the truth okay so i don't know mike if i have um the option to move my cursor here for some reason i can't move my my cursor hmm 
Uh, can you do share control? Uh, um, if not, I'll, I'll work with it. There you go. Um, I think we're just sharing one, one screen. Or Okay. Mm, remote control, I guess. There it is. Remote control. Yeah. Uh, give mouse keyboard control to, I guess, to me. Uh, Okay. Can you help me? I don't yeah, know if you that. can give me mouse control, that would be <laughs> great. Control. Yeah, under remote control on the top. Uh, I see. If not, don't worry about it. We'll go ahead. So, request remote control. I think only only you have control to be able to change that mic. I'm not seeing those on my end. Select request. There you go. Uh, approve. Question. Okay, never mind, guys. It's it's okay. So here we go. Uh, can you still see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is the first flip. Um, the address is nine four five Purdue Road, Corpus Christi, Texas. Of course, this is where I live. Seventy four one eight. As you can see on the screen, the value of this was one hundred seventy five thousand seven hundred sixty before it was renovated. Okay. On the screen, it shows two beds, one bath, 1,287 square feet. But the reality is when, you, when I investigated this house, I went in with my realtor. It's actually three bedroom, one bath. Okay. So um, the thing with this property is it has a huge lot. Behind this house is a huge lot. You can put two swimming pools in there. <laughs> okay. It, it has like 0. 0.31 acres, a third of an acre, okay? So that's a huge lot. You can park a boat in, in front and you can put another cottage in the back. I mean, it's just huge. And here in this area, a huge land is really, really um, a good find because it's like 15 minutes away from the beach, from the Gulf of Mexico, okay? If you look at the map where Corpus Christi, Texas is, we call this the Florida of Texas. Okay, we're literally across Florida. If you look at the map, it's it's parallel to Florida. So any any water, you know, water stuff you find in Florida, you can find here. I mean, jet skiing, deep sea fishing, um, sailing. They they actually call it the the sailing capital of of Texas because uh, there's a lot of windsurfing happening here. <laughs> okay, so. Let's go ahead and proceed. Um, this is what happened. 175, 760 was the uh, estimate before it was um, renovated. Oops, what happened? Let me. So, I'm do you use to go to the next slide from Zillow? Yeah, at Zillow, you can use that or you can use realtor.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I lost control, Mike. It's not letting me. There you go. Now, why real estate? Okay, this is answering the question that Mike asked before. Why real estate? Why did I even consider this? Number one, shelter is a basic necessity. Okay, everybody needs a roof over their head, no matter what, right? So this is why I decided to go into real estate. Number two, they don't make any more lands, right? <laughs> There's just <laughs> limited lands, right? Unless God makes some more <laughs> out of nowhere, then yeah. And number three, it can burn down, but then insurance will replace it. Okay, you can't say that on stocks. When stocks go down, it'll probably take time before you get your money back, right? Mm -hmm. And number four, you have great options to monetize. Okay, what are these options to monetize in real estate? You can sell it, you can rent it, or use it as a collateral. Meaning if you have a paid off property, you can use that, go to the bank and tell the bank, hey, I have this property, it's paid off. Can I borrow money and use this as a collateral? Yes, you can. All right. So before the rehab value is, I mean, before rehab, the value again is 175,760. Okay. Now, the selling price from the original owner was 105. Okay. They dropped the price to 89. Why? Because if you go to realtor.com, which we're going to go through later, when no one is looking at the house, they're not getting a bite. Guess what? That price will continue to drop. 
So, so the house was on the market for a while, Bert? Yeah. The house was on the market for a while. No one was no one was looking at it. No one was making an offer. I guess it's because it looks ugly. And you'll see later, you'll see the pictures of before what was uh, the scope of work, right? And that's the key with flipping a house. You look for houses that are ugly. No one wants to touch. Okay? If the number makes sense, which you will see later, then you go for it. Okay? So the selling price was 105 initially, and then it dropped, and it dropped, and it dropped. Finally, it went to um, 89,000. Okay? And so what did I do? I offered 80. They won't budge. I say, nope, we're not going to do 80. Okay? They act, this is what happened. It's funny. They actually gave it to someone first. They didn't give it to me. Even I offered, um, no, I take it back. So from 89, they drop it to um, 82. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I offered full price. Okay. 82. I'll take it. They didn't give it to me. The realtor of the other party gave it to someone they know. Okay. Whether you like it or not, politics happens everywhere. <laughs> this realtor knows someone and they'd rather work with that person and boom, they gave it to that. And guess what? Their financing dropped, meaning they didn't have the money to purchase the 82. They went back to me. Mm -hmm. And when they went back to me, I said, I'm not going to offer you 82 anymore. Let's do 80 <laughs> since you didn't give it to me. Right? So mm -hmm. make this story short. They still didn't budge, but eventually... I got it for 79. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did I get it for 79? Because during the option period, guys, there's this option period. It's called 10 days. Option period is when you put in a deposit and you get your home inspectors to go in and inspect within 10 days anything you want to be inspected. I mean, mm -hmm. to, from top to bottom, foundation, plumbing, electrical, walls, everything. Okay. During that inspection, we found some stuff that didn't pass. For example, is a hydrostatic pressure, okay? So that means it needs plumbing work. So my representative, my realtor, came back to the other realtor and said, hey, you know what? This needs plumbing work. It takes about 3000 to fix that. So the seller went down from 82 to 79 and mm -hmm. basically... With the closing costs, we got it for 82, okay? Mm -hmm. The closing cost is something, guys, they call it soft cost. In any real estate deal, whether you're selling or buying, you will have closing cost. That's That goes to the title company and all that, all the paperwork, lawyers' fees and all that. So I got it for 82, okay? So um, what happened here? I click something, it won't go. Okay. Closing costs are cheap in Texas. While Bert's, while Bert's uh, looking at that, I yeah. think, uh, so I just bought a house um, about a year ago. Yep, almost a year to date, July 1st, bought a house. And our closing costs, I think, were about $10,000. Mm -hmm. But the closing costs um, are related to the price of the house. So the lower price of the house, the lower closing costs. So that's why Bert's was only about 3000 there. Um, which is quite reasonable. The more expensive house, be prepared for more closing costs. Right. A little something I learned. <laughs> right. That's right. So, uh, Mike, I'm trying to stop share and you won't let me. Can you do stop share on your end? Yes. There it is. I got it. Okay. So there we are, 79, closing costs. Now we're going to look into how the house looked like before rehab, okay? So here we go. You, you guys are going to love this. And we're going to go into the old pictures. I just okay. gonna love if you're going to lend me some money. <laughs> we'll get there, Mike. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so while you're looking at that, there's a, a quick question here. Is it a percentage of then the house? I guess that's for the closing cost. Yeah, the, the closing costs uh, will depend on like what Emma said, it will depend on the price of the house. Okay. Okay, so, so this is the old pictures of the house. This is one of them. Let me see if I can 
going to the next without um, that's the front as you can see it has old garage and on the left side they they barricaded this area for their trash um, they have extra dirt in here um, they have um, unattended uh, flower beds they have an old AC right in front. That is an eyesore. Mm -hmm. When you go in and you see the AC right away, and what the heck is that doing there, right? So normally it's either on the side or in the back. And you see this hole right here? That is a hole that goes into the, um, what do you call this, uh, the foundation of the house. Because part of the house is sitting on a pier beam. Part of the house is sitting on a slab, Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that. And then the next picture is this. This is on the side. As you can see, this is what they call the fascia. Okay. We're now going through the scope of work. What needs to be done in this house? Fascia is, is a big deal because this is where the water runs down when it rains. Okay. So it rots easily. And then that's the hole I was talking about. Um, look at the step. It's really ugly. Um, old door and over here on this uh, small patio they have hanging ceilings it's open you can hear um, rats crawling <laughs> so it's really ugly okay so um, that's that and then the next picture is this this is the inside when you open the front door okay as you can see on the top you have old drywalls, old uh, drywalls on the wall itself, and old wood panels. So this tells you this house is probably built in the 1970s. Okay? okay. Old doors, um, unfinished concrete, okay? And old uh, wood flooring. Okay? That's that. And then the next one is, this is the living room. Okay? So as you can see, it's unfinished. They only have one window right here. And for whatever reason, they put another window at the corner of this wall right here. It doesn't make sense. Okay. And then the next one is, this is the other window I was talking about. Does that make sense to you? One window here and then one window in the corner. So it just doesn't make sense to me. Looks like the previous owner was trying to renovate the house and then they gave up. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is the first room in the front of the house. So you can see the baseboards are, are not done properly. Uh, unfinished concrete, walls are ugly, uh, windows are not finished correctly. Okay. Um, we're just going to go through this quickly. Now, this is the dining room. As you can see, there's a hole in the wall of the panel. See those ceiling? That's what you call the popcorn ceiling. And that right there tells you at some point there was a leak in the roof because these are watermarks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then again, those windows are unfinished. Wood is old. Um, old fan. And then next one is the, another room. Old wood panel. Unfinished left windows. Your dartboard. Yeah, I know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that wasn't there when I bought the house. Somebody probably took it. So, <laughs> yeah. And then this is the other room on the right. This is the third room. If you can see this part right here, the ceiling was open. There was a leak during uh, Hurricane Harvey. And mm -hmm. so they were trying to fix that leak. All right. And then this is another view of the second and third room. This is the closet, old panel. Um, this is the shelf that's uh, bowing right there, so that's a no-no. Um, next one. Look at this ugly kitchen. Oh, really ugly. Bad. Come on now. I mean, this this is gas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, underneath the sink, you know, it's really rotten. Mm -hmm. So, and this area right here, I don't know what they were trying to do with this small room. You see the ceiling? Mm -hmm. The, the um, insulation is falling down. S the walls are open. The floors are really old and rotten. Is there somebody living there before you bought it or is it already no. abandoned? 
No, I think they abandoned it and oh. they were trying to fix it. Mm. So, um, and then you probably don't know what this is. This is part of the garage. This is when you when you get out of the uh, the main door in the back, you'll see this in the garage. This is the water heater. This is their air handler, also supplied by gas pipes right here. You see that? Mm -hmm. So what we did, guys, just to tell you in advance, we got rid of the gas supply in the house. I don't mm -hmm. want any gas. I know gas is cheap, but it... Uh, predisposes the residents into carbon monoxide poisoning, okay? And it's just my preference. I don't want that in the back of my mind if somebody, you know, dies there because of carbon monoxide and all that or, or whatever leaks. So I went and converted this house into pure electric, okay? Mm -hmm. Is so, that, is that, um, uh, is that like a, an added expense or? No, no. So that's a good question, Emma. So, Guys, when you when you want your house or any property to be converted into pure electric, all it takes is to shut off the gas supply, okay? At least in Texas. So I just called the city and I said, you know what? I don't want any gas supply in this house. Can you guys turn it off? So they, they do a work order. They send somebody there from the city and they shut off the uh, main supply going to the house. And then my contractor then... Um, shut off the uh, the main um, shut off valve that goes that's near to the house. So there's two shut off valves, one from the street that's coming from the city, and another one next to the house. Okay, that you have to shut off before you cut off any pipes and seal that pipe. Okay, otherwise it can blow up. Okay, so it has to be done by a professional. Okay, so good question, Emma. By the way. So here's another picture in the garage. They had a small um, window right there for whatever reason. And then now they covered it because apparently there are some burglaries happening in this house. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and then unfinished ceilings right there. They got a bunch of trash, old furniture, and old AC. This AC, by the way, is still working. It's cold. So when I bought the house, it was still there. So anything in the house is mine. So I kept this AC as a backup, put it in my uh, parents' garage just in case AC goes out, you can use this, okay? Then I gave this to my mom, this uh, cutter for uh, <laughs> the flower beds. <laughs> for some reason, this right here is no longer in the house. They probably took it. I wish they left this. because Yeah, this that's a nice least, That's at least three grand right there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... All right, so that's that, and four more pictures, and we are done with the before pictures. Okay, this is the exit out of the garage going to the backyard, okay? Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, they have the connection for the uh, washer and dryer here, which we uh, actually remove. We put the washer and dryer connection inside the house. You'll see it later. And we converted this area right here into a second bathroom, okay? So the second bathroom went from here to here, mm -hmm. this area right here, okay? And then the fourth room is from this to this, going back to this area. So from oh. a 3-1, it became a 4-2, four, four bedroom, nice. two bath. Nice. Yeah. Now, Bert, do you get to see all this beforehand? And would you recommend that people like only buy a house that they actually get to see the inside of? That's a good question. If it's a house listed, in the MLS, then you have the, the chance to see it beforehand, before you can make an offer, okay? If it's a house you buy at an auction, more often than not, you don't have a chance to see that because either someone is living in there or they don't allow you to look at it. You just basically drive by, look at it from the outside, um, and basically you are going in with a blind eye if you buy mm -hmm. that house in an auction. But for an expert uh, observer, you will know whether it's a good buy or not, you know, even just from the outside, okay? I don't know how to do that. I haven't bought a property from an auction, but I'm planning to. That's my next move. That's sort of advanced though. So, so yeah. like in, from your experience, all the learning that you've learned, 
you know, you, you'd lean towards seeing, I mean, for me, at least buying a house, like there are so many things like our house was fairly like done and there were still so many things. So yeah. I think it's really important to only look at houses, at least at first that, that you can go inside and that you can see exactly what you're purchasing. Right. Uh, they call that uh, scope of work. Okay. You need to know the scope of work. So that way, um, you know, how much you're going to spend as far as repair. Okay. So at least an estimate. Okay. Good question, Emma. All right. So next picture is this, look at this yard. That's huge. Big, okay. Yeah. yeah like nice. I said, you can put two swimming pools in there. This lot spans two houses right next to it. That's how huge the land is. So as you can see, they have some shed here. They have some storage here. They have a rabbit hatch right there. Aww. They have a chicken coop right there. Uh, chicken coop, I guess that's how they say it. This is a Canadian lemon. The, this lemon grows as, as huge as a tennis ball, you know, and they have a pomegranate right here and just a bunch of cactuses in the area. Okay. So that's that. And I think another backyard picture is this looking at the back of the house. This is a uh, huge land, as you can see. The roof is fairly new. It was um, re roofed 2018 after Hurricane Harvey. So that's good because when you're investing in a house, you don't want an old roof. Otherwise, it'll cost you money. They can cost yeah. you easily eight to 10 grand just to replace a roof. Okay. So I saved money there. And I think the last picture is this a close up of the shed, rabbit hatch, chicken coop, and the storage. Can you guess what I did with all of this? <laughs> I gave it away. I posted it on, I took a picture, posted it on Facebook Marketplace, and it said, whoever wants it, you can have it for free, but you have to haul it. Uh -huh. And boom, boom, boom. I, mean, I just got these messages left and right, and they took care of it. Some <laughs> people want your trash. You'd be surprised. All right. Okay, cool. Any questions on the old pics before we go into the new pics? No, nothing really. But uh, so you got, uh, let's go back to the financing part and everything. So you got uh, 79. So how did you find that money then? The, the 79. Mm -hmm. Okay. 79. So, did you go through a bank? No. Go to a hard no. lender? No, no. You, um, let, let's go through the new pictures real quick, and then we'll, we'll finish with the finances. This is okay. going to be quick. Is that okay, guys? Yeah, yeah of course. So, all right. So this is the new picture. Uh, oh, wow. This is a live listing on Realtor.com. If you guys go to Realtor.com in your computers right now mm -hmm. and search the address. Very nicely done, Bert. Thank you. <laughs> if you, you know, search the address. all it takes is like coat of paint. I feel like when I watch it, I'm like, you just paint the house and it looks, you know, <laughs> do some grass and take out the junk. And oh, my God, it's like a brand new house. Yeah. But look at the price right now. Mm -hmm. 215. 215. How much did I get it? I hate 39. you now, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> 82, right? But wait till, till you, you see the repair cost. But I still made yeah. money, and you'll see that later, okay? So 945 Purdue Road, that's, that's live if you go to realtor.com. It says contingent right now because this is what happens. After you accepted the offer, so it sold in three days. I accepted the offer. The reason it says contingent because now – they're working in the background to do all the paperwork, the inspection again, um, the uh, uh, what do you call this appraiser financing, financing and all that. But once I accepted an offer, no one can buy this house because it's it's sold. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, but what you can do is get backup offers if you want to. Um, but in this case, the buyer really wants the house. So. Um, the buyer is a mom who has two kids, military husband. They plan to stay here for three years and they have another kid on the way and they want a swimming pool. Okay. And um, let's look at, let's look at the house right now. Okay. This should be easy because we just go through it. So this is the front. As you can see, we, we replaced the garage. Mm 
Mm-hmm. This is a new garage door. If you don't notice, these are new sidings. Yeah, did you replace the siding? Replace the sidings, took the old porch, put new post, make it look nice and clean, replace mm-hmm. the windows, okay? Mm-hmm. Close the hole in here. No more AC here. Put a planter box right there. Replace the uh, concrete right here and got rid of the old flower bed and put new um, landscaping. Very simple landscaping. This landscaping right here just costs about 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. At Home Depot. You basically get uh, red concrete, uh, red mulch, and then some rocks. These rocks are from this house that we we pulled from from the front yard. (laughs) We repurposed them, put them in here. And then some plants. Okay. So at first, I wasn't really thrilled about the yellow color and the red barn. But guess what? If you look at. Oh, Pinterest, you didn't pick the colors? I didn't. My wife did. <laughs> My original idea was to go with the trending color of gray. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because gray is trending right now. Yeah. But my wife said, you know, don't go with gray because you already got gray inside, which you'll see later. Yellow is happy, you know, and you're you're by the beach, you know. Clean, it's, fresh. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's near the ocean, so kind of like of course, the beach I mean, you can argue whatever. with your wife. Exactly. I don't. I learned that the hard way. And you, ne- you course, never win. <laughs> the women are the one who's going to buy it because the women are going to buy it with their emotions. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And if it's us, we're thinking as men, it's like it's gray or oh, that's the you know, fashion and everything. <laughs> But <laughs> it's the way women who's going to buy literally, right? That's I mean, right. Even, my, even our house here, I'm like, yeah. I didn't have any say. So <laughs> we we just work for like, them, Mike. We just work for them. I know. Even the, the color of the inside, you know, the, when we were painting, <laughs> I'm like, that's okay. No, we got to change it. That's right. All that's right. right. Well, I said, okay, you're the that's boss. Right. Do you okay. notice something here? See this driveway? Mm-hmm. So this wasn't in the original um, picture, okay? At first, I was planning on doing concrete. But you know how much a concrete would cost me to do from, from this part of the house to the front? Hmm. About oh 10 grand. Oh, wow. This is a, what they call yeah. reclaim asphalt. Mm-hmm. Okay? And a reclaim asphalt is a lot cheaper. I only spent 750 bucks wow. for this. Okay, it, it took two loads of um, uh, reclaimed asphalt, uh, which cost about two fifty five a load, and then I hired a guy with a tractor to level it. So in mm-hmm. total, I spent about seven hundred plus. Mm-hmm. Okay, it looks a lot different, a lot better. The, the black part is just is that a shadow from a tree? Yes, this is a shadow from a tree, right okay. here from the neighbor. Right. Yeah. So, and as you can see, we put new fences, okay? Mm-hmm. So new fences, guys, if you can replace old fences. Um, I have a guy who did this for 100 bucks labor on each side. So I spent 200 bucks on this. I bought the uh, materials, of course. Ah. Yeah, so um, that was a good deal. All right, so this is a close-up. Um, that's the planter box. I did this myself, believe it or not. Again, Pinterest. I look at Pinterest for planter boxes. How do you do it? This is actually made of cedar um, fences. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I just I just cut two pieces uh, based on the size of this corner. It covered uh, the bottom of the, the pier beam, put some dirt, put some mulch, and put some plants. And then you see these pieces of uh, square concrete? Mm-hmm. Again, this is from the from this old house. I picked it up and put four of them right there and put mulch around it. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's really good. You take a video of yourself. You need to take a video of your. You should have taken a video, right? Me working, right? <laughs> working my my butt off, right? Mm-hmm. So I love it though. It was, I treat it as my workout. So, so this is a tree that we were contemplating whether to take out or not. We decided to leave it because yeah. it just need needed some trimming. Okay. So as you can see, we replaced the front fence because that's the first thing the buyer will see. Mm-hmm. Okay, the neighbor's fence is kind of old, but that's okay. They're still good. Okay, and one thing, guys, when you're flipping a house, uh, make sure to befriend the neighbors because they can tell you stuff about the house you're flipping. 
Um, they can even help you with what you need. Like in this case, this neighbor gave us access to their backyard. Like we literally dug in her backyard because we had to connect to the city sewer. This house, this old house, wasn't connected to the city sewer. It had a um, what they call a septic tank. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't want a septic tank because it requires maintenance. It stinks when you don't do it right. So I, I told my contractor we need to connect to the city sewer. Cost us thirty two hundred to do that, but it's a lot of uh, peace of mind, especially when you have four bedrooms, people in the house taking a shower, doing laundry, and all all that. It, you want to connect to the city sewer. Well, okay. and you can also really, I mean, what I learned when I bought my house, sorry to interrupt, but but no like the, the housing costs uh, were significantly different if you had a sewer versus if you had septic. Right. And so I would find a house and I'd be like, oh, like this house is way cheap. And then I would read it and it would have septic. And so, and and basically the houses would be equal. So, you know, I think that's one, one thought is you're putting in 3000, but you can probably get maybe more because it's now a more valuable house. People just don't right. want to deal with septic. They want everything to be all connected. Right. One thing with septic though, I would tell you guys, if you're getting rid of septic, please, please, please make sure you close it right. So what we did on the septic tank, we, uh, we took a jackhammer, uh, removed the top. Uh, well, first we, we called the septic uh, company to, vacuum all the liquid before you can destroy the septic tank so that cost about four hundred dollars to vacuum the septic tank and once it was empty we rented a, a jackhammer from home depot for one day and we just hit that thing and once it was broken we filled it up with dirt dirt that actually came from the front of the house because we had to level this so we, we repurposed that dirt and the tractor went to the side of the house right here and just filled that old septic tank. Because you, you want to do that. You want to follow code because if something happens, let's say a child fell into that oh, hole, yeah. number one, it's in your conscience. And number two, it can come back and haunt you and get um, sued for it. Okay. So you got to do it right. Everything in this house was done into code or up to code. Okay electric plumbing uh foundation and all that you want to do it right don't cut corners okay sounds like medical right if yeah. somebody's in code and somebody's septic <laughs> yeah so this is the close-up of the uh landscape you see that what do you think mike i think it's good nice and simple Red right mulch. yeah 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 just... we just mulch our front uh, area so <sighs> yeah all right so that's that um this post right here it didn't cost that much. I paid a guy 100 bucks to do this three post. And what we did is we, we uh, bought a treated wood, six by, um, six by eight, I believe. And then we kind of did some uh, cosmetics, top and bottom. Mm -hmm. You can buy a vinyl baseboard. So vinyl doesn't rot, right? You can use a vinyl baseboard and just wrap it around the bottom and the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is another angle in front of the house. Again, this is a huge uh, lot. You can park a boat right here. This is where I park my truck whenever I, I go work in the, in the house. Okay. Did you put the uh, grass on it or you just let it? No, no, no. This is an existing grass and, mm -hmm. you know, usually... The buyers can just spray this with those uh, grass seeds and, and they'll grow. And they look better now, now that it's been raining lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So now let's go to the inside. Oh, wow. Wow, Mike, right? <laughs> remember remember the old panel? Yeah. With a hole? Oh, wow. That Looks was like, a, what do you call this? Like a... The Chip and Joanne when it's closed and then they open it up. I love the up. floors. Yeah. yeah. This, this is... That. This is uh this is uh what do you call this a tile that looks mm -hmm. like wood obviously is that laminate laminate you mean no no it's a ceramic tile oh, ceramic wow. tile I was lucky the contractor I have uh, worked at Trump Tower in New York mm -hmm. I mean and he works in different hotels all the, all they do is pretty much uh, I mean they concentrate on tiles but they also do other stuff as you can mm -hmm. see okay 
So we tore Did down. You use that- your backdrop in your in your in your back, and then you put it on the floor. Or no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we tore down that that wall right here oh, to wow. make it look one one area. Uh-huh. Okay. Remember those bigger. popcorn ceiling? Mm-hmm. No more popcorn ceiling. These are new drywalls. Mm-hmm. And then this is an existing window. We just cleaned out the edge and finish it right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Look at the bathroom. I know, right? That's a ceiling to floor tile. Tile. And I installed that glass door. Wow. Sliding door. Okay. A new tile collar in the bathroom. Everything was mm-hmm. gutted out. New commode. Um, one thing about flips, guys, do not save money or, I mean, you can save money, but do not try to limit what you can do in the bathroom and in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. That's what most women look for. Right, Emma? <laughs> uh, uh, I actually have to admit that one. There you I go. I have to admit, like our house right away, I was like, yeah, the bathrooms are a big deal. I don't know why. And then the kitchen. The kitchen is way bigger than the bathrooms. Like you have to have like a really awesome kitchen. Like that's what sold right. us in our house was our kitchen. There you um, go. So yeah, kitchen, kitchen win. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You well, see we these chandel- cook a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you see these chandelier right here? Mm-hmm. It's twenty bucks from Facebook Marketplace. Oh wow. Yeah, brand new is five hundred bucks. So that's one tip I can give you. If you can find stuff from Facebook Marketplace, that's good. Then then do that. So yeah, I my see, wife, she I has see, those stuff online. Yeah, I save four hundred eighty bucks on this. Mm-hmm. One. Okay. And these cabinets, um, they're brand new from Home Depot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you have to paint them too? I guess. No, right? no. So that's one thing I don't want to do is paint cabinets. I want something that's already done and finished. Oh. That way my contractor can just install it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So this is the view to the front door if you're inside the house. This is the mm-hmm. first room. Okay. As you can see, this is a new rewire. Meaning new outlets, new switches, they rewired the house. And let me talk about that real quick. Since this house was built in the 1970s, one of the biggest expenses is electric, electric okay, wiring. If you find a house and you see an aluminum wire, that's big bucks right there, okay? Some it's houses, bad. It's, it, it's bad. bad because what they said is aluminum can catch fire easily. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this house had to be gutted out and rewired with copper. Okay, mm-hmm. I spent about seventy nine hundred in rewiring the whole house. Okay, but again, for my peace of mind, I want to make sure whoever buys this house, you know, can sleep without thinking this house can make catch on fire. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So and obviously it has to pass um, inspection, you know, yeah. from the fire department, and we did. Okay. You yeah, see this yeah, light right here? You might as well do it the right way. Yeah. You got to yeah. do it the right way. These are LEDs mm-hmm. okay, from Home Depot. They're, they almost lie flush to the ceiling. They're about two inches thick. Okay. It makes the place look really wide as opposed to buying those big square ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it saves space and it LED saves energy. Okay. And then the other thing we did is we... We had to reduct the whole house. So new AC ducts, okay, new, they call it a drop. So when you have an HVAC person that goes into the house, they count how many drops they're going to do, meaning how many vent of AC ducts they're going to do. Okay, um, I think this house required about 14 or 15 drops, this vent right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You notice why there is a step here? Because this part of the house sits on a pier beam. This is a slab. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's why there's a step right here. All right. So this is the close-up. So they love this. The buyer loves this because this is like, uh, how do you really call it, open. Emma? Open, yeah, open, open space. Open yeah. concept. Yeah. So this is a dining room. And obviously, this is the kitchen. 
Yeah, you have to go right open. Here. Otherwise, I don't even look at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My wife, she's like, when she goes to uh, watch those HDTV, I guess the lady there will just open this, open that, open this. So <laughs> now It's like an ongoing she, meme. Open, uh-huh. open, 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 open. And then no walls at, home, at all. <laughs> yeah. Here at our home, it's like, we need to remove this. We need to open this, <laughs> open that. So the whole house is just open now. <laughs> yeah. So remember the old the ugly that. kitchen? Mm-hmm. So we gutted it out, tile floors, new cabinets, wow. uh, new appliance, dishwasher, electric stove, and you have your vent right there. No wonder it got sold real quick because, I mean, look at that. The it's workmanship very well, is so... It's very well designed. Very, very well designed. It's, it's like a hotel. You know, again, my yeah. contractor works on hotels. So backsplash and all that. Um, you know what they call this? <clears throat> they call this a fur down. Oh, okay. The reason they have this is because the AC duct is running here towards the laundry room right here. Mm-hmm. And you'll see that later. But going back here, if ever you have to knock down any walls, you see this part right here? Mm-hmm. We had to add this. I saw, I saw happen to have a friend who's an architect, okay? And she told me, Bert, if you have to knock this down, make sure... The beam structure right here is reinforced. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we did a reinforced beam right there. Okay, so this is a close up of the bathroom, I mean, of the kitchen. Everything is new. Right so there, nice. another picture. Mm-hmm. No picture. wonder that sold so quick. Yeah, now this is the laundry right next to the, the kitchen. Uh huh. So especially for moms cooking and washing at the same time, they don't want to go to another room to check on the laundry, right? So it's right there, okay? Cold water, hot water. Again, electrical uh, people did the right thing to code. This is where you put your, your, your dryer and then your connection to the outside, okay? Mm-hmm. This picture was taken when this wasn't uh, caught yet. See this gap right here? Mm-hmm. You don't want that. So we caulk that to make sure it's close. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's taken care of. All right. So this is another angle of the living room. This is a new fan. Um, this red thing right here is to cover your um, smoke alarms. Mm. And you only remove this when everything that's dusty has been done. Floor, walls. Oh. You leave that there. Otherwise, it will clog your, your sensors. Oh, okay. Okay. And this is another angle from the wall of the uh, the living room. Okay. So that's two windows right there. Another angle. That's a close-up of the bathroom. Nice bathroom. That? Yep. Yeah. So, so modern. Big, yep. Big, uh, big tiles. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is uh, caved in. I forgot what they call it. This is where you put your bottles, your shampoo, and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and this, you can buy this as a, Kit at Home Depot, mm-hmm. sink and uh, and um, mirror. Of course, uh, modern commodes. You have your one and two flush uh, options. Mm-hmm. This is inside one of the rooms. Another inside of the room. Now, this picture was taken when the closet has not been completed yet. So we basically put a sliding door here, put some shelves here, mm-hmm. okay? and you can buy that as a kit from Home Depot or Lowe's. Same thing here. So we put some shelves here, put a huge rod right here, put a board up here so they have room for the clothes. This mm-hmm. is the second bathroom. Remember the garage where the garage. They have the door going out in mm-hmm. the corner? This is it. Mm-hmm. So this is a space-saving shower. So if you look at the frame, yeah. this is a Delta brand shower. So just three sides. So mm-hmm. Am I going to fit in there? <laughs> <laughs> You will. All right. So that's the outside. This is the, remember that garage door? Uh Uh-huh. Right here. That was it. So nice. Yeah. And this is the uh, other angle for the, one of the rooms, second room. This is the garage. See how big the garage. See how dirty Mm -hmm. the garage was earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that uh, old uh, air handler here and the water heater? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All of that is gone. And we drywalled the garage, ceiling and walls. We put new steps right here. This is a three riser stepper going mm-hmm. down the garage. 
And during the inspection from the buyer, apparently, if you exceed four or more risers, they call these the risers right here, mm -hmm. then you are required to put a handrail. Oh, but I since this is that, yeah, yeah, but since this is below four, there's only three, you're not gotcha. required to do that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and during inspection, um, the buyer's inspector looked at this water heater. The problem in this water heater is there's no pipe going out of the drain in mm -hmm. case it overflows. Okay. So what we did, we got the plumber, put a pipe here, put a hole in this wall towards the flower bed. Mm -hmm. There has to be a drain. And then the TPR valve, which is the uh, pressure release valve, also has to have a pipe going down here and outside the house. And in Texas, and probably in most states, the rule says it has to be six to six inches to 24 inches above ground. Okay. So new garage door. Uh, the, the heater? No, the, the pipe. The pipe? Yeah. The, the heater has to be, uh, I believe, 24 inches above. Really? Yeah. There probably, huh? Yeah. And then uh, this is a new door. Normally, the new garage door, if you go to... Um, a local dealer, they quoted us twenty two hundred. Mm -hmm. I found a guy who did this for seven fifty. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, all about getting multiple quotes, or if you have friends of friends that can recommend. Exactly. People. So, so what I did, the reason I found this guy, I was going to the auctions already just to learn, and that's where I met people. Guys, networking is very important. Mm -hmm. So I met people that are already flipping, and they gave me their contacts. Hey, if you need this. Call this guy. He's really cheap, and he's the one to get called by by these companies, and he'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's it. That's how you save money. And this is the back new AC right here, new doors. Okay, so my brother-in-law happens to be an AC guy, so I save money there. Um, he installed this, and then the drain from the AC goes on this side. Okay, so as you can see in the back, this is the part of the house that sits on a pier beam. Mm -hmm. okay? If you sell the house and they tell you why is it sitting on a pier beam, well, number one, one of the advantages of, of a house on a pier beam is it's easier to repair if you have plumbing issues. Okay, mm -hmm. go under the how do you spell that? Uh, P I E R and then B E A M, okay, pier, pier. okay, pier yeah. beam, okay, yeah. Here, so the, just the, like the pier, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the pipes of this house are, are under this uh, pier, so it's easier to repair. Can you cover that, or did you cover that? Uh, um, like a, I was gonna like, cover it, but my realtor said, "Don't cover it. Leave it to the buyer what they want to do with it." Okay, mm -hmm. but we actually put a ten by ten deck here. Okay. Oh, so I learned how to build a deck. I YouTubed it. <laughs> I got me a helper. I was able to build a 10 by 10 deck in two hours, mm -hmm. but I had to buy the right tools. I bought me a, a nail gun uh, with a compressor, you mm -hmm. know, for, for framing. So yeah. uh, we did that. We, we made it sit. We made, we use a 12 by 12 uh, concrete pavement, two inches mm -hmm. thick, put it in every corner and put the uh, deck above it that way in case it sinks you know, it, it, it would level out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So this is another picture of the house in the back. We're almost done. This is the front. See how you have new fences in the front. So this is the first thing the buyer sees in the front. Okay. And that's it. That's your before and after picture. All right. Do we have any questions from any attendees? Let me check the Facebook group here. Uh, you want to start with anything in the chat in Zoom, Mike, while I check that? Well, uh, not right now. I don't see anybody uh, asking any questions there. But I see seven people watching, so thank you very much. If, if you're watching live, please comment live again. If you're watching mm -hmm. in a replay, comment on the replay. Well, I think I think as it's as it's getting in the chat. Yeah, I don't see any new chats. Um. As it's getting sort of, uh, you know, sort of closing on the webinar, you know, what's what's been your biggest takeaway, Bert? What's been your biggest learning experience? What what's some advice as well that you would give to someone potentially wanting to do this uh, as like a side hustle? 
Yeah, good question, Emma. So uh, do your research, okay? Number one, do your research. And um, I will tell you, the this, this stress is real, okay? So it, it stretched me to a point where I never thought I would feel that kind of stress, okay? So, <laughs> however, I, I got to learn more of myself and I didn't realize, okay, if I can conquer this, then I can... I can do whatever is is below this. Okay? Now, is the stress is the stress about uh, the money? Is it about choosing the choosing everything? Like, was there someone? Because obviously, you know, we're not design experts. There's you know tile and all these things. Did you? Mm-hmm. Did how much of this did you allocate out to other experts, like a design person, uh, uh you know, etc. Um, on this project. I didn't, I basically took whatever I learned and then apply this, okay, um, to this project. The stress comes from when um, when you find out something that needed to be done and then uh, you didn't expect it, right? And then uh, when your contractor, you know, when they're, the workers they they hire are not up to par, then that's that's stressful. Okay, so but then I learned to relax and adapt, you know, just like in rehab when you're working with coworkers who don't do what they're supposed to do, you're like, you know, why did you do this, right? So um, I don't know. I guess that's that's the leader type in me. I want things done right, you know. And when they not when they're not up to par, then you kind of get stressed out. Okay, but but then again. If you're not, um, what do you call this? If you're not good in dealing with uh, problem solving and Mm -hmm. dealing with stress, then don't do this, okay? Don't go into this. But if you love challenges, you love seeing things getting done, and you have this perseverance to make it happen, okay, then obviously... This is something you can do. And to me, it was well worth it. I call it my tuition fee. And <sighs> thank God I didn't lose money. And you will see later how much money I made. I will summarize this. I will summarize the number and you will see how much money I made. And um, I'm glad I didn't lose money on my first deal. Okay, And <laughs> I think w- what helped from me losing money is because of the research and before I... I pull the trigger. I knew if something goes wrong, I have enough room for error. And you have prior business experience. I think, I think sort of having employees and dealing with, you know, various things that I think it naturally hones itself to someone who is a little bit more savvy in like Mm -hmm. the, the marketing, not the marketing, the um, negotiations that you did. You Mm -hmm. know, I think that naturally sort of has come about with all your business experience versus someone like myself. I maybe wouldn't be so inclined to be able to negotiate as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's transferable because you have the experience in the business and being a therapist. And I, and I also like what you said, you know, uh, if you are not used to, challenges if you're not used to handling stress don't go into it you know i mean it's like you always tell me not everybody's made to be an entrepreneur you mm-hmm. know i mean if 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 everybody want if everybody became an entrepreneur and how how are who are we going to hire we uh, won't have employees going to work for us right <laughs> so same thing with real estate you know uh, if you are not up to it don't do it if you if you're if you don't know how to handle stress, if you don't know how to handle contractors, if you don't know how to handle uh, negotiations. Well, like Emma mentioned, don't go into it because you're just definitely going to lose money, and yeah. uh, it's just part of it. And uh, the thing here, it, it, the reason why I really like what you're talking because you just remind me of my mom and dad. They did this, you know, in in the Philippines. They uh, we still got some rental properties there and. That's what they did. You know, they would uh, not really flip, but they would have rental properties. And just so everybody know, I knew Bert from how long have I known you? Two, three years. And when he bought the house, he we were communicating and he was calling me and he was really stressed out. 
<laughs> no, I mean, well, I'm just being honest here, right, Bert? I yeah. mean, I'm going to embarrass Bert here. No, I mean, I, I already said it. You know, it's stressful. You no, know? yeah. I mean, we just want to be transparent here, and yeah. he was stressed out. And he's like, yeah. Michael, I don't know what to do. I mean, in this, 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 and that, I, I, I wish uh, this, this, and that. And there's another expense here. I'm going to pay this guy again. And we were, in, we both were like that. I would encourage him, and he would, I would call him, hey, I have, I have a problem here. He would encourage me uh, of all the issues I have in life, and he would, I would encourage him. And then you know what? I mean, he asked for a prayer. I think so. that 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 day, and that day that he sold the house, he called me. He was so happy. I'm like, oh, bro, I just sold the house, and I was so happy. I called my wife at that time, and he sold it. And imagine he got his money back. And sometimes, you know, God or whatever, whatever you're believing, you know, whether you're you're a Christian or not, God will put you in a in a certain challenge in your life. And he the he will give you that big challenge. But remember, the bigger the challenge, the bigger the victory. And the, God gave him a challenge there, but he took action. He took that action and moved on forward. So he had that big challenge. He had that big struggle. Guess what? He got that big victory, a big money back. <laughs> That's the reason why Bert's going to lend me some money now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all about taking risks. I think that's yeah. that's exactly to summarize like what Mike's saying is is that, you know, you have different appetites for risk. You know, starting out, you may have an appetite for a smaller risk, like doing an online course, which is very very small risk, and then you tiptoe into entrepreneurism and into multiple streams of revenue. And then the more and more comfortable you feel, then you can take these bigger risks. Um, such as doing something like Bert did with flipping a house. And so it's just about what you like to do, the risks, the financial uh, safety net. So I do agree with Mike and Bert that like, this is something where you do want to have uh, a safety net because it is risky. Um, and you do want to, you know, have mentors, have help because this is a bigger risk than say doing something else. So um that's just that, that's just my two cents yeah 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 i mean that that's true you know um and by nature i'm a risk taker guys i'm a risk taker cuz um one thing i discovered about myself if i want to do something like i said from the beginning of this webinar the best way for me to learn is just do it and learn from it okay um you can read all you want you can research all you want but unless you dive in then you won't really know you know, how it is. Okay. So what I'm about to share with you guys is this, is it worth all the stress I've been through? Is it worth <laughs> every challenge that I, that I encountered, you know, um, will I do this again? The answer is yes, I will do this again. It's worth it for me. It's my tuition fee and what I made is not bad. Now, what I'm about to show you guys is a number that I made, and this is not to brag, but to show you the truth and the honest truth about this um, this flip. Okay, so here we go. Before you, you show the that, so so the stress in that shows, I guess it's real, right? So it's not really drama, there, right? Nah. Because <laughs> when I wa when I watch those shows, HGTV, the husband and wife are just fighting over. Oh, it's <laughs> real. So much again, and then there's this. It's uh, real. I it's wanted the green tile. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's real. It's Is real. It? Okay. Right. It's real. You know, um, but again, you know, if, if you can go past that, you get better and better, you know, just like, you know, we're, we're rehab professionals here. Remember the stress of your first day at work as a PT, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm sure you, you, you felt that, right? Like, oh, yeah. what the heck am I going to do here? Right. You got I your fake it till you make it, you know, exactly. As a new grad, exactly. you don't go, oh, oh. Exactly. Right. So here we go. Here's here's the summary, guys. So we're almost done here. So the purchase price is 79. OK. The repair cost me 70 grand. OK, it's almost the same as what I purchased it for. OK, mm -hmm. initially, and this is where the stress came from. Initially, I thought I was just going to spend 30 grand. OK. And it's always more. That's yeah, look at this, show, so. 70. So I spent 40 grand more. 
Okay. The big ticket items, number one, the, the rewire. I didn't expect the rewiring of the house. It's 7,900, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the connection to the city sewer. That's 3,200. So how much is that already? Mike, can you do the calculator? What? what? That's uh, 7,900 plus, plus 3,200. That's 11,1, right? Yeah, a little over okay. 11, yeah. Yeah, and now the, the AC is 30, um. 36 plus three, it cost me 7,600 on the AC. So about 19,000. There you go. So that, those three alone is almost 20 grand. Yeah, 18. All right. Seven. Yeah. And then my contractor cost me 24 grand labor. How much is that already? No, how much? 23. 41, seven. There you go. And then the rest are mater materials. Okay, so purchase Am I get this, or are you just telling me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna lend me this? Or <laughs> now here we go. You have what you call your soft costs. Your soft costs is your closing costs, that like the the three thousand on top of the seventy nine, plus the realtor fee. In our area, it's usually five percent. Okay, plus the closing fees that you have to um, contribute to the buyer. Okay. Mike, I want you to add this. So this is my cost, 79, 70, and 21. Oh, what do no. you got? 79, <laughs> 70. You're asking a guy who doesn't know math, right? 170,000. Huh? 170. 170. I sold it for 215. So how much is my profit? Minus. So like 45? Mm -hmm. You got it. 45 grand. No calculator, people. No, that. There you no go. kidding. <laughs> there you go. Mine is negative. <laughs> <laughs> so I made 45 grand on my first flip. Okay. That's not bad. I mean, that's, that's not a, a full-time salary for some and, people. And that is because I had so much room. I had so much room when mm -hmm. I purchased it yeah. for error. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I purchased this house at 105 then I wouldn't make this much. Yeah. Okay. But still, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, still not. I mean, how, 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 um, let's just check. How much hours did you spend here? You know, how long did you held the property? Normally when they watch the HGTV, oh, we got to turn this over in two months, three months or whatever. Well, How it took long five it months. It took five months. Five months. But, but, okay. Yeah, but then again, I'm not the one working on it because I have a contractor. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's why I spent 24 grand on the contractor. Basically, yeah. my role is go in and out, check if, if they're working or not. Okay, because I was still running my um, rehab business and I still am. I still have my home health contracting business. And um, I was going to, do some um, correction earlier, Mike. I, I didn't actually pivot. I still kept my my business. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. just added. I just added another stream of income. So the the home health contract business that I have is actually what helped me fund this project. Mm -hmm. Okay, because um, going back to Emma's uh, question earlier, did I spend money on this one? Of course I did. Okay. So what happened was. I borrowed money for the initial purchase, and then I also borrowed money for the repair. However, the way it works in uh, flipping a house, because you don't borrow this from a regular bank, because the bank, when they see that ugly house, they're probably not going to lend you money because they have yeah. to protect their money. Because the way bank works is they want to make sure in case you cannot pay, they can still sell the house and get their money back. They couldn't sell that house at that condition, right? So no bank will lend you money. I mean, very difficult to find a bank will lend you money at that prior condition. Okay, so you're gonna lend me now. <laughs> so I had to find another uh, funding source that would lend money for the rehab and the purchase of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I did. Okay, but now that it's been repaired, the bank of the buyer will now fund this house because guess what it's ready to go ready to, yeah it's built okay yeah so they have this term what they call arv which stands for after repair value oh so the after re repair value of the house is at 215 
the prior repair value earlier I showed you was at uh, 175, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, the purchase costs right here, 79 repair and all of that. Yeah. So I think we have some questions. Yeah. Let's just say, you know, before we end, before we go to the questions, 45,000 is your profit and you worked on it for, for five months. I mean, I know you didn't work, you know, 24 seven, but the stress, you know, but it's 9,000 a month. It's still not bad, right? It's Imagine 9, that. Yeah. Not bad for a five month project. And, yeah. um, I didn't have to do all the work since I have a contractor mm -hmm. okay. and then, uh, what do you call this on the next project? You, you're going to make it faster because now you've learned from this first flip. Yep. That's right. True. You've learned. Um, I've already learned the big things. One of my takeaways, Emma, that I was going to tell you earlier from this flip, I learned how to price any labor, any task. I learned how to price materials. I learned how to troubleshoot, you know, whatever is wrong with the house. Okay. Yeah. I learned how to network with other investors. And basically, it's like building a house from the ground up. The only thing we kept here is the roof. That's 2018. We kept the slab and the frame. Mm -hmm. Everything was replaced. AC, electric, uh, plumbing, bathrooms, walls, tiles, a water heater, garage, a laundry area. So I learned all those stuff. Mm -hmm. So now if I come up with a, another project that's not as, as tedious or doesn't require so much scope of work, it's going to be easier for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest takeaway. That's why I wanted to take on this project and I'm glad I did. All right. Well, mm -hmm. my biggest takeaway is so when you lend me that uh, profit there. <laughs> well, anyway, wow. let's go Speaking ahead and profit. answer. Guys, this is important. Speaking of profit, normally, if you don't reuse this profit, Uncle Sam will tax you. It's yeah. called Capital gains tax. Yes, you got to buy another house right after it. You got to buy another house, which is what they call a 1031 exchange. Okay? Mm -hmm. And there's some paperwork to do that. So when you do, when you 1031 exchange your profit, then it won't be taxed because you're ro rolling it over to the next property. Perfect. So that's the purpose of, of, of this 45 grand. We're going into our next project now um, and roll this money so we don't have to pay taxes on it. You're going to roll it to me or I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a couple right. questions here. So Alvin asks, um, first, I think it's best to do a second question. Was this all through a website or through a realtor? What's the first question? Uh, did you, I think, did you buy and sell the house through a website? Like, I guess, did you do it on your, on your own or did you use a realtor? I use a realtor. I use a realtor, you guys. And uh, I'm also thinking of maybe... Maybe I have to get my realtor's license just so I can save on the 5%, right? <laughs> I know. So, uh, <laughs> the classes aren't too hard. I actually took uh, the classes. I just never took the test. You can go oh, to community okay. college. It's only three classes. You can go to community college. I think I spent just $500 take all three classes. You can do them really? all online. They're you can do it online. Easy. Yeah. You can Ace do them online. all while working full time. And then you just have to take the test. Yeah. There you um, go. Yeah. Um, how did you narrow down the house? How, How did, did I what now? House? How did you choose the house? <clears throat> well, every every investment has a number. Okay? It all boils down to number because number don't lie. You cannot let your emotions make you decide whether to take on a project or not. You can, oh, this house is so pretty. I love it. And then the numbers don't make sense and boom, you lose money. Okay? So obviously, the location has to do with it. Okay? A lot to do with it because that location of the house is, again, close to the beach, 15 minutes. It's five minutes from the military base. It's five minutes from Texas A&M University. It's five minutes from major grocery stores. And it's sandwiched between two main roads. Okay? So it's not like a subdivision where you have to go through different streets. Okay? And it is in a location where the, the number one sought high school in the area is located. Okay? Location, so location, location, location. Okay. So how did I narrow it down? So uh, that's a good, good point because I just didn't look at one house and boom, this is it. You have to compare different houses. You have to compare different potential investment and see which one will bring you the highest return. Okay. So that's, that's how you look at it. Okay. Now I use a realtor because realtors know more about the area. They can run comps for you. Comps is short for comparables, meaning 
they can run the numbers and look at the uh, the pass number of houses and pricing of houses in the area. That's what comparable means. So for example, in that zip code, what they would do is run what houses sold in zip code 78418 and for how much. Okay, that will give you an idea of your ARV, your after repair value. Okay, that way you're not going in blind and think in your head, oh, I would make or I would sell this house for this much and come to find out the houses in that area only sells for 150. Okay, so that's a no no. So we did the comparables. That price of 215 is about within that range in that area. So did I answer that question? Yeah. Okay. Bert, so what I was the second question? question. Uh, well, uh, he said thank you. Thank you, Alvin. Um, okay. In my, 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 uh, I have a question too. Okay. How about, I mean, you did this because it was pretty close to where you live. And uh, how far is it from where you live? Can we do this remotely? Uh, obviously, you, you did it close it's, to where you live. So. It's close to where I live. It's about mm -hmm. 15 minutes drive. So should we start in our area? Yes. I had, we had, I, had, I had a rental like two hours away from where I live now. And we had to sell because I don't, you know, I don't yeah. have anything there in that area. Yeah. So we had to sell it. And then uh, obviously our properties is, is in the Philippines. So uh, it's, it's, I can't, you know, I can't. So is there a way to do it remotely or do you really need to do it where you're living? You know, is there a scope or? Yeah. I mean, how does I would, I would suggest you do it close to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The only time the only time you can do it remotely is if you have boots in the ground. That's what that's the term they use it. They use in real, real estate boots in the ground, meaning mm -hmm. you have someone there that, you know, that can scope the area for you, scout the area for you and, and look at what's going on in the real estate market. Do so your due diligence. Yeah. If you don't have boots in the ground in an area, then don't do it. OK, okay. Mm -hmm. so with this, it's really close to my area. So it's a no brainer. OK. All right. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? Um, with a show of hands, how many attendees do we have? Let me check. Uh, here in the webinar, six people. Okay. And, uh, in the alternative career group. Well, anyway, earlier we had like 10 or 15. Now it's just 10. So, mm -hmm. okay. Before you started this, did you have any coach or uh, somebody was guiding you or... You know, I uh, just no, I didn't have a coach in this one. I didn't have a coach, but I, I just researched and went to well, I take it back. Somehow I got coach attending um live conferences before the COVID crisis. You mm -hmm. know, my wife and I would go to conferences and learn from investors and all that stuff. I listen to podcasts and all that, you know. So uh, I read books. And then when I realize, you know, how they calculate the numbers, then I just applied it. OK, mm -hmm. and um, I'm glad you asked that because I want to know from our attendees if if anyone here is interested in uh, in joining me in forming uh, a group of real estate investor startups. I'm planning to do a mastermind on this. And what we can do is uh, we can analyze your deals together. I can have um, guests in the mastermind group where. I would ask a loan officer to talk. How how do they approve loans? I would ask a realtor to talk in the, in that group. You know, how do you look at properties and stuff like that? I would interview um, construction contractors. Okay, how how they work? When do they get paid and all that? And then I would interview other investors. Okay, so I want to start this group because I myself I'm a newbie. As you can see, I'm a beginner. This is my first flip. So I want to gather every single real estate investor wannabe to be part of this group and uh, we can all learn together and I'll be obviously your moderator and um, I would pour everything I know about this group. And um, yeah, if you're, you're interested, feel free to reach out to me on the uh, ACG group. 
or uh, with to Mike and and Emma, and um, we can you know talk about dynamics of this and see how we can execute that. Okay, yeah, that's because, that's upcoming. Okay, it's very very valuable there because uh, when they first bought a rental, I didn't know who to talk to. Yeah, you know, and I was talking to the realtor. Of course, the realtor's mindset is to obviously just sell, sell, sell. I don't yeah. have somebody to actually ask, hey, is this the right deal or not? And uh, that's the beauty of having a fellow therapist that you know, like, and trust. <laughs> and, and hey, hey, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? And that's what me and Bert does. I would call him, hey, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? And he would tell me, hey, don't do that. Don't buy that. You know, I just yeah. I just called him over the weekend. I was supposed to buy something. And I asked him. And he told me specifically, no, you don't need that. So yeah. simple as that. And, and that's the value of having a close knit mastermind. Uh, before you, before you stop, <laughs> uh, there's a question here from Alvin. He is asking, did you take hard money lending or use personal money for this project? I did take hard money because like I said, the bank, um, won't finance an unfinished house. Okay. So the hard money cost is part of the realtor and soft costs right there. Okay. That's part of those expenses. So the good thing with the hard money is they're easier to access and um, they, they're not as, what do you call this? They don't require as much as what the bank requires. Paperwork, and, yeah. Yeah, and the, the hard money lenders are asset-based, meaning if they look at the asset, which is the house, and they, they see that it has a potential and that your ARV makes sense, then they lend you the money. That's true. Okay. And they have the same mindset like you. Yeah. You know, because the bank, what they see, what what they're they only want to see what they want to see. They want to see like a finished project already, and they're just gonna lend you what the actual amount of that actual property is. Yeah. Unlike with a hard money lender, you know, I mean, of course, it, the interest is higher and everything like that. I've deal I've dealt with them, and my mother was like that. And uh but they have this like-minded, uh, like-minded like you. They see the potential in that in, on that property, and they would say, "Okay, here's the money. I know you're gonna make uh, good with it, and then just uh, give me back." And it's a win-win situation. They earn from it, you earn from it, and then everybody wins. And you you provide employment to those people around it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lynn Young is raising her hand. Uh, okay. Lynn, uh, do you have any question, or you were just raising your hand? that uh, you wanted to join that group. Uh, if you wanted to join that group, just reach out to Bert. It's just one uh, message away. Uh, uh, you an email. He's just very, very cool guy. Do you want to provide uh, your email, Bert? Uh, just so know, people know to contact him. We can put it later in the group too. Yeah, it's uh, you guys can reach out to me real easy. It's BertPT at gmail.com. That's it. So Bert, uh, B as in boy, E-R-T as in tango, PT as in physical therapist. Bert PT at gmail.com. Yeah, Bert PT at gmail.com. He's going to also uh, send uh, his bank account and his credit card uh, <laughs> <laughs> number. What do, you, what do you call that? That three digit number at his back. Uh, uh, Lynn said she had just excellently be, uh, raised her hand. Okay. And right. Alvin said, sounds interesting. Did one project in 2014. So looking to do more. There you go. I mean, there's. Uh, there you go. We got some uh, um, real estate investors in here. That's yep, good. Yep. And then there's a lot of, you know, uh, people in the group that uh, actually real estate licensed realtor. And, you know, it could be it's like a, uh, a, a mastermind or a, a group there that you can lead. And then yeah. from there we can grow and maybe everybody could just land money. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking out like, big like crowdfunding or something. Yeah. Crowdfunding. Alternative career crowdfunding. We're going to buy a house and make it as an Airbnb. I have a student here right now. He, I mean, he he's uh, staying in a Airbnb, and it it's nice. It's making money, you know. So, uh, Robin here is asking, uh, will you explain the soft cost again? The soft cost is usually the money you pay for um, the interest in loan, uh, the closing costs. Okay, when you when you purchase a house or you sell a house, and then your realtor fees, those are your soft costs. In other words, these are the expenses you you spend for 
uh, carrying the loan, for maintaining the house until it sells. Those are your soft costs. You just can't get away from that. Okay, mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's a given for every uh, real estate property. I guess there's such a thing as hard cost, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess <laughs> one of the top, right? The hard the cost is your purchase. Yeah, your hard cost is your purchase and your repair. All right, That's your hard cost right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you don't have, if you have any questions, just put up on the message or the chat box. If not, uh, oh, Bert, I mean, go ahead and uh, uh, tell us about your your the group that you're wanting to start. Uh, could you let us know because I'm really interested on it too. Uh, yeah. So uh, what I uh, want to do, uh, let me this. let me escape this. So what I want to do is this. I have this idea of um, starting a group together. I would call it a real estate startup group, real estate investing group. And um, just like uh, the other courses we have inside ACG, this will require time to put together. Obviously, it will require me time to facilitate it. So I just want to let you know that this is indeed just a disclaimer. This is a paid group. This is not going to be a, a free group. However, I want to make it as affordable as possible, okay? Because um, I know a lot of us right now are struggling with, with uh, money. So I'm not going to charge a lot of money for you guys to do this and the, it's going to be 97 bucks a month if you want to be a part of this group i call it the real estate investing startup group and um what you'll get is you learn how to analyze a deal you figure out the scope of work you determine whether to take action or not on a deal okay so we're going to have a private facebook group with monthly masterminds and the guests will include, like I said, bank loan officers, hard money lenders, construction contractors, realtors, and other investors. Okay, I think ninety-seven bucks a month is affordable. You know, it's not that much, and considering it costs a lot of money to attend seminars and all that stuff, uh, paying for coaches, and I think this is this is uh, very doable. And I believe in in the power of coaching. I need coaches myself in my other businesses, so. Um, yeah, so this is the group. If you're interested, just message Mike or Emma, and uh, we can send you the link to uh, to this uh, group. Actually, why don't we do that right now? Um, let's put well, it in before the, uh, you do that, Bert. I'm 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 just for everybody to know. I'm interested. Why? Because I can call Bert. I'm scratching my head because I'm I gotta fix my hair. I don't have my gel on, but I'm I'm I can call him. And then let him know, hey, do you think it's just a good deal? You can do a live video or what do you call that? Facebook time or FaceTime. I don't have that. You know, like a video on the phone. Hey, do you think this is good? And that's the beauty of it. And having a second opinion, because I don't. My wife is my second opinion. But uh, she doesn't have any experience too. So in having somebody to throw ideas and, and, and stuff, just literally. And uh, that's the beauty of it. So. Yep. Uh, it's always good to be able to bounce back and forth with someone, whether, you know, a, a deal is good or not. Okay. Um, as opposed to just putting it all in your head. Okay. So that's the purpose of this group. That's why it's a real estate investing startup group. Okay. So if you have any, any more questions about this group, feel free to reach out to me, Mike or Emma. But then again, um, the link is already there. I posted it on the chat uh, chat box. Um, it's only 97 bucks a month and there's no contract. If you think this is not for you, then you can always cancel. Okay. Are you going to teach us too how to find hard lenders? Because yes. So that's part that here. Money, I'm hard like, money lenders. I don't know. What, yeah. Okay. There's, there's, there's a list of hard money lenders that we can go through and they teach you. I mean, they show you, you know, how much it costs to uh, borrow money from them. This is the reason why. You want to do hard money lender in every investment, okay, as much as possible. Um, again, it's fast, and if you don't have good credit, it's asset based, okay. It's based on the property you're you're uh, trying to flip, and then you usually pay interest only, okay. You don't pay for the principal. So if you're paying interest only, for example, for six months. And then you factor in that interest in the sell or the sale of your uh, of your property uh, as part of the cost, then you can still be profitable. Okay, 
just like what I showed you guys in the numbers, I made 45 grand. That's after paying realtor and hard money lenders with their interest and everything and after all expenses. Okay. And what we can do is we can dive in deeper on how the mechanics work. How do you how do you get the money from these lenders and, and how do you pay your contractors, like I said, and how do you work with realtors and other uh, bank loan officers? Okay. Well, All right. Uh, uh, I know you're, I know you're tired and I know you, you uh, no, I'm good. There's one go more for question. another round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you answered this already. Uh, Manuel is asking, can you give a breakdown of the realtor and soft cost? Totaling twenty one thousand. Yeah, I, I I can do that. So um, let me pull up a calculator here. So where is that? And it's really easy. So um, two fifteen thousand is the sale, right? Mm -hmm. And the realtor fee is five percent. So times five percent. That's what goes to the realtor, mm -hmm. 10750 So 21000 21000 minus 10750 mm -hmm. That's my cost for the interest for six months. So you divide this for six months. I basically paid about... Uh, yeah, 1708 of uh, interest um, for that loan. But then the returns after that, to me, it's worth it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're basically borrowing money from a hard money lender to uh, fund your flip paying interest. But again, if you factor that in from your expenses, it's well worth it. Yeah. Okay. So... Did he answer that question? I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Anything else, guys? Any more questions? All right. So, uh, again, we are planning to launch a real estate investing startup group. If you guys are interested, feel free to reach out to Mike or Emma. I already shared the link there. And I think we are, we're ready to wrap this up. Yeah. Well, all right, Emma. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Bert. We really appreciate it. Um, everyone, you can check this out on the, there'll be replay on the Facebook group, on YouTube, and uh, we'll even create a little blog post as well that has the link so that you can learn more about the program and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Emma and Mike. And uh, if you guys need the link from me, uh, I'll send it to you. Yeah. But if um, you can um, post it on that, uh, in the chat, in the actual Facebook's live stream so okay i right. posted it in the chat and uh if there's any more follow-up questions after these or even after they watch the replay let me know and i'll be happy to do a follow-up okay. right. well, thank you so much bert thank you so much everyone well, thank you, you, you go thank ladies you and sorry. gentlemen always remember the word fast f-a-s-t remember f-a-s-t because speed wins speed wins you gotta do it fast guys ladies and gentlemen so letter F, find friends that will push you to your next level because you are the average to five people you hang out with. Who are you hang out with, uh, ACZ Alternative Girls Group? If you hang out with uh, uh, realtors, guess what? You're going to be realtors, right? If you are hang out with awesome therapists like Bert, Emma, and the rest of the moderators or the coaches of this team here, guess what? You're going to be awesome too. So find friends that will push you to your next level. Letter A, you got to learn how to take action. All this stuff that we're doing, it's not going to do me good. It's not going to do Bert or Emma if you don't take action on it. Take action. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Bert took, a, took an action here. He took an action by accepting that challenge and just moving it on. Just keep on moving it on and just pushing himself to the next level. Yes, there is challenges. Yes, there is a big struggle there and, and some, some stuff. The bigger the challenge, the bigger the victory. Guess what? You're going to encounter some stumbling blocks along the way. He saw a lot of stumbling blocks there, but what he did with that stumbling block, he made it as a stepping stone. You will, you will fall there. You are going to fail. You're going to fall, but it doesn't matter how many times you failed or fallen or got, uh, got rejected by the lenders. 
It's how many times you do it and stand up and do this all over again. And la next letter, letter S. Please subscribe and share our show, our podcast, and everything. You know, subscribe to Bert. You know, follow him because the more following, the better, right? And last but not the least, letter T. Not time out, but teach it. Why? Because when you hear it, you forget. When you see it, you remember. But when you're actually teaching it, you're actually understanding it more. And that's the reason why Bert is going to teach us how to do it. Because the more he's teaching it, the more he's actually going to understand it. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much. I appreciate you, Alternative Careers Group. If you have any questions or any concerns or any violent reaction, reach out to Emma. Not <laughs> violent reaction. Thank you, and you thank have a you good guys. night. Bye. hope you enjoyed the show check out our website at drmikechua.com or alternativehealthcarecareers.com for more information again acg be awesome be great be excellent thank you and hope to see you on our next episode goodbye